Hi everyone, our subject today is diarrhea in pediatrics. Diarrhea is defined as stools of increased frequency, fluidity, and volume. In young children, most acute diarrhea is of infectious etiology and is self-limited. On the basis of its duration, diarrhea can be classified as acute, less than 14 days, persistent, 14 to 29 days, or chronic, more than 30 days. The history should include associated symptoms as well as the child's growth pattern. A description of the diarrheal stool may help indicate the diagnosis. Watery diarrhea may be osmotic due to carbohydrate malabsorption or secretory due to toxins, gastrointestinal peptide, bile acids, or laxatives. Stetoria, a greasy stool, indicates fat malabsorption, example pancreatic insufficiency. Mucus and blood in stool indicate intestinal inflammation, infection, inflammatory bowel disease. In toddler, the presence of undigested food may indicate a normal variation or chronic nonspecific diarrhea, toddler's diarrhea. Overflow incontinence secondary to constipation and rectal impaction may be mistaken for diarrhea. Hematuria and abnormal renal function suggest an enterohemorrhagic strain of E. coli, an associated severe dermatitis, perioral, acral, perianal, suggest, should suggest acrodermatitis enteropathica. The social history should inquire about recent travel, exposure to unsanitary conditions, daycare attendance, risk factor for HIV and sick contact. A diet history that includes seafood, unwashed vegetables, unpasteurized milk, contaminated water, or under uncooked meats may suggest foodborne or waterborne agent in acute cases of diarrhea. In chronic cases, assessing type and quantity of oral intake, especially fluid selection, is helpful because certain selections may exacerbate diarrhea symptoms by an osmotic load. Inquire whether the onset of symptoms coincides with the change in diet, discontinuation of breast milk or formula, addition of jar foods or cereals, addition of sugar-free or other sorbitol-containing compounds. High fever and Caesar have been associated with Shigille E. coli O157 H7 an enterohemorrhagic strain causes a hemorrhagic colitis that is followed by hemolytic uremic syndrome in approximately 10% of cases. Enteroinvasive E. coli may also cause bloody diarrhea. In hemolytic uremic syndrome, watery diarrhea precedes the grossly bloody stool. Abdominal cramping with minimal or absent fever is characteristic. Undercooked beef is most commonly identified source of outbreak. Specific tests must be requested when um, the E. coli strain is suspected. Yersinia and combinobacter may be associated with prolonged course of diarrhea. A bloody diarrhea is often seen with bacteria listed here, but diarrhea may also occur without blood. Parental diarrhea refers to diarrhea accompanying an infection outside the GI tract. Diarrhea is frequently associated with upper respiratory infections, otitis media, and urinary tract infection. The mechanism is not clear. Post-infectious enteritis after acute enteritis is a common cause of prolonged diarrhea. Low-grade mucosal injury is responsible for the metabolisms in young infant. A secondary lactase deficiency may be a contributing factor in older infant and children. A hypocaloric, high-carbohydrate diet is often responsible for the persistent malabsorption. 
approximately 10% of children with the Hirschsprung disease develop enterocolitis. Historical red flags include a history of delayed passage of meconium, preceding constipation, Down syndrome, and a positive family history. Absent stool on rectal examination and immediate passage of stool after the rectal examination are suggested. A rectal section biopsy demonstrating absent ganglion cell in, uh, is necessary for diagnosis. In chronic diarrhea, a finding of leukocyte or occult blood is more suggestive of inflammatory bowel disease than bacterial infection. Cystic fibrosis is characterized by frequent large foul-smelling fatty stool and not classic loose watery diarrheal stool. When accompanied by history of recurrent respiratory infection and failure to thrive, a sweat chloride test should be done. Infants younger than 6 months tend to present with the failure to thrive, diarrhea, stetoria is more common in older infant and toddler. How to approach to child with diarrhea after performing history and physical examination? Is the sign or symptom is acute, less than two weeks? If it is yes, this is acute diarrhea. Temporarily associated with food intake, other with similar exposure and symptoms. If it is yes, this is food poisoning. If it is no, is there recent medication use? If it is yes, this is antibiotic, laxative, prokinetic agent, drug side effect. If it is no, is there a blood or mucus in the stool? If it is yes, stool culture with or without C. difficile toxin, differential diagnosis, bacterial gastroenteritis, Shigella, Salmonella, Compylobacter, Yersinia, Enterohemorrhagic E. coli, Enteroinvasive E. coli, Aeromanus, and C. difficile. If it is no, there is no blood or mucus, consider stool for ova and parasite, stool culture, Giardia agent, Cryptosporidium agent with or without C. difficile toxin, differential diagnosis, viral gastroenteritis, rotavirus, enterovirus, norovirus, calicivirus, protozoa, Giardia, Cryptosporidium, bacteria, E. coli, travelers, diarrhea, salmonella, C. difficile, vibrio, cholera, parenteral diarrhea or overfeeding. If it is chronic diarrhea in infant below 6 months, is there a blood tinged stool? If it is yes, stool culture with or without C. difficile toxin, stool culture, C. difficile toxin. If it is abnormal result, bacterial gastroenteritis with C. difficile. If it is normal, maybe food protein induced enterocolitis. If it is no, there is no blood in the stool. Is there weight loss or poor weight gain? If it is yes, consider stool for the blood, white VC, ova and parasite, fat, stool culture, stool for Giardia, antigen, C. difficile toxin, uh, complete blood count, ALT, GGT, sweat chloride, stool and serum electrolyte, serum zinc level and immunoglobulins. If it is abnormal result, Differential diagnosis, cystic fibrosis, protozoa, giardia, schwachmann diamond syndrome, hepatic disorder, cholestasis, immune deficiency, autoimmune enteropathy, congenital chloride, losing diarrhea, bacterial gastroenteritis, acrodermatitis enteropathica. If it is normal, differential diagnosis, food protein induced enteropathy, post infectious enteritis, excessive juice, intake, sorbitol, protein, calorie, malnutrition, munchesin by proxy, microvillus inclusion disease. If there is no weight loss, the French uh, sent for stool study for ova and parasite, pH reducing substance, stool culture. If it is normal result, differential diagnosis, post-infectious uh, enteritis, protozoa, giardia, cryptosporidium, excessive juice intake, sorbitol, carbohydrate malabsorption, congenital disaccharide deficiency, and bacterial gastroenteritis.
if it is normal result, differential diagnosis, post-infectious enteritis, excessive uh, juice intake, hardship brain disease. If it is a chronic diarrhea in infant more than six months of age, consider stool for a blood, pH reducing substance, ova and parasite, Giardia antigen, cryptosporidium antigen, stool culture, C. difficile toxin. If it is abnormal, differential diagnosis, bacterial gastroenteritis, protozoa, Giardia, C. difficile, post infectious enteritis, disaccharidase deficiency, inflammatory bowel disease. If it is a normal result, as we mentioned, is there weight loss or poor weight gain? If it is yes, consider stool study for white BC, fat, alpha-1, antitrypsin, elastase-1, CBC differential, with differential, ALT, GGT, ESR, C-reactive protein, HIV test, sweat chloride, IgA, anti-tissue transglutaminase, immunoassay, Serum immunoglobulin, serum zinc level, if there is rash. Differential diagnosis, post-infectious enteritis, congenital disaccharides, deficiency, HIV, cystic fibrosis, Schwachmann diamond syndrome, celiac disease, immune deficiency, food protein enteropathy, hepatic disorder, cholestasis, inflammatory bowel disease, acrodermatitis enteropathica, protein calorie malnutrition, intestinal telangiectasia. If there is no weight loss, a differential diagnosis, excessive juice intake, uh, chronic non-specific diarrhea, toddler diarrhea, post-infectious enteritis, lactose intolerance, irritable bowel syndrome, constipation with overflow incontinence, laxative abuse, Munchausen syndrome, or by proxy. Recommended investigation: a stool culture for bacteria, antigen. Uh, viral antigen for rotavirus. Test the stool with the clinic test table for uh, reducing substance to confirm lactose intolerance. A blood for electrolyte indicate uh, not is indicated unless the diarrhea is mild and there is uh, little or no dehydration. Top tips: Mothers are usually good historians. Urine frequency and color can give an important estimate of the degree of dehydration. Concentrated urine, orange color, suggest mild dehydration. Infrequent and small amount of urine, suggest moderate. And anuria means severe dehydration. Toddler's diarrhea, functional diarrhea, is most common cause of chronic diarrhea without failure to thrive. Excessive fruit juice and fructose consumption may play a role in the pathophysiology of this condition. Diarrhea persisting for longer than two weeks termed protracted or chronic diarrhea is mostly due to milk lactose or protein intolerance. Temporary withdrawal of milk and dairy products is usually diagnostic and therapeutic. Large watery diarrhea is associated with diffuse abdominal pain and vomiting is typical for enteritis, usually termed gastroenteritis, whereas a small, frequent bloody stool and lower abdominal pain are very suggestive of colitis. Major reduction in diarrhea, morbidity, and mortality over the past decay is due to oral rehydration solution rotavirus vaccine and zinc supplementation. Probiotics may be beneficial. The main causes of protracted diarrhea are milk protein and lactose intolerance and celiac disease. Polymer-based oral rehydration solution using rice or wheat has advantage over ORS uh, less than uh, 270 milliosmol per liter and uh, ORS more than uh, 310 milliosmol per liter. The principal complication from the area is dehydration. If a child is alert and playful, the degree of dehydration is insignificant. Red flags. Be aware of harmful practices in the management of the area with the, which include restriction of fluid, breastfeeding, and food, 
and inappropriate medication use. Toddler's diarrhea is common and should not be misdiagnosed as gastroenteritis. These children are healthy and thriving, passing three to five soft stool daily, often containing undigested food particles, carrots, peas. It is self-limited and resolves spontaneously when at school age. Children with loose, frequent stool may have an infection elsewhere like UTI or appendicitis. Laxative-induced diarrhea induced illness is rare but should not be missed. The diarrhea is usually chronic or recurrent. The carrier of the child often has an underlying psychiatric